Hello, and welcome to the second season of Sermon Recap. I'm Joshua Sanders, and I know I'm not the normal host for the show. And before we see Pastor Andrew's scripture reading, sermon, and benediction, I have something I would like to ask. We have begun the process of reforming church, and this is your time to be heard on how you would like to see the second season of Sermon Recap go. Do you want the same setup as last season with Leanna Compos, where she talked about the scripture, we watched the sermon, and then she le left us with prayer? Or would you like for us to do a talkback style where the host pauses the sermon to talk about pieces of it and then continue watching and to pause, watch, pause, and so on and so forth? Or would you like to see the scripture reading, see the sermon, and then see the benediction? I would really like to hear from our viewers on how you would like to see the show go. This is a show for you to see the sermon either for the first time or to rewatch it to learn something new. So how would you like to learn and experience the recap of the service? Please comment below to let me know or feel free to email me at this email address. Now here's Pastor Andrew reading from Luke chapter 15 verses 1 through 10, his sermon entitled Lost and Found and his benediction. Thank you for watching and have an amazing day. Now I invite you, if you would, to stand and hear these words from the Gospel according to St. Luke in the 15th chapter and the first 10 verses. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to him, that is Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness to go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he finds it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you there is more joy in heaven and the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. If you drive into the um, subdivision that I live in, you will see as you enter on a uh, wooden light stand which there is there, a poster that's being tacked to the uh, wooden post there saying, missing black Labrador, 65 pounds in weight, white spot on chest, black birthmark on tongue. No collar but microchipped answers to the name Loki. That poster has been there almost a year. October last year it first went up. Those details, like I guess many of us, provide us with a sense of sadness. If you see one of those on your local street corner or even on a Facebook page, your probably your action is the same as I heard there. Or, And if you're like me as a pet owner and uh, a dog owner as well, you're thinking not just because of that loss and the parents, but what if there's a little child there who's missing the dog? Or what's happening if the parents are finding themselves, beating themselves up because they let Loki out without a leash? See, everyone's greatest fear, I guess, is of losing something or someone that they love dearly. Sadly, Carolyn, my wife, uh, like many other travelers, learned the hard way about putting valuable jewelry into her checked bag. Always take it 
on carry on. You see, you might lose an engagement ring and be devastated by the loss, looking for it everywhere because you know it's got some value. But more than that, it has a relationship value. It has a sentimental value. You may be overjoyed at discovering a family heirloom that you thought had been missing for years, and it's just been recovered. Or your child might cry rivers at the loss of a cherished stuffed bear or rabbit, or as in my case as a young boy, like Linus, I had a corduroy blue blanket that I took with me everywhere until one day it went missing. All of us fear missing. But all of those things can pale into significance when it comes to losing someone who is dear to you. Think about it. Those of you who are parents or grandparents, if you've had that experience as I have, that moment of panic when the little child who was with you in the store is no longer there. They were there literally two seconds ago and now they have vanished. It's hard to explain that kind of anxiety that kicks in immediately when you're searching frantically for the child. And then when you find him or her, immediately you enfold that child and hold that child and never want to let them go. And I have to say, after that experience with my son David as a young, very young boy, we went out and bought a wiggly wire, which was a little elastic wire that had a cuff on one end that was small enough to go on his wrist and a cuff on the other end that was big enough to go on my wrist. And when we went shopping, we wore that all the time. And you wouldn't believe how many people came up to us and said, where did you buy that? It is a great idea. <laughs> and then there's the loss that comes from death of a loved one or the people whom we admire. And today we remember those whose lives were taken in the terrorist attack of 9-11-2001. Those who left home that morning and never returned. Employees in the Twin Towers, employees in the Pentagon, People who had boarded a plane to go from one place to another. We remember too the first responders and the bystanders who went into the buildings or who were hit by falling debris. One of those moments that places you firmly in history because you will remember exactly where you were when you heard that news. Just as I will recall sitting at my desk reading and preparing today for today when I heard the announcement on the BBC of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The end of the second Elizabethan era and the passing of a monarch and a lady that was great in so many ways. And again, if I might just take a moment, as it were, of personal privilege to say that whilst I was never presented to the Queen, I was in the Queen's presence. She came to the theatre in Scotland in which I was working on uh, as a member of the stage lighting and stage sound crew for a royal command performance. I think the opera was The Marriage of Figaro, but I can't be certain of that. But I certainly remember that after the show, as was custom, after the final curtain, the cast lined up on stage and Her Majesty and Prince Philip and her entourage were brought to the stage in order to be introduced to the cast. And just before the performance started, the stage manager told us that as members of the crew, we were allowed to go and stand behind 
at the back of the stage so that we could see what was going on. And so I went down with everybody else at the end of the show and stood in the line at the back and sure enough, Her Majesty came with all the entourage and she walked the line across, greeting some people and speaking with them. Of course, you don't ever speak to the monarch unless this monarch speaks first to you. And then if you do, you were to say, Your Majesty on the first occasion and Mom on the second. Not that I ever got to use that, but there we are. Those things that they teach you in school, just in case. And as she got to the end, and we thought she would leave or go off stage, Her Majesty decided she would go and meet the other line of people who were standing at the back. And I could see on the stage manager's face sheer dread because they'd never said anything to us about what would happen if she came. But it reminded me and stuck with me that this lady was always looking, always aware of the surroundings, always aware of who was there. And it didn't matter whether you were the royalty of opera or you were the stage crew, in her eyes, you were important. And so I've always taken that message with me to try and remember. When I worked in television, we went through training for this day that has just passed. It's called Operation London Bridge. London Bridge was the name that was given to the whole procedure that would roll out on the announcement of the Queen's death. For Prince Philip, it was Fourth Bridge, because he was Scottish, based. But for the Queen, it was London Bridge. And I had rehearsed with TV crews all of the things that would happen. And when on that day I saw the BBC move to black subtitles and white lettering, I knew something was happening. And sure enough, the day ended with the announcement of her death and Prince Charles taking the title King Charles III. Will you pray with me? God of mercy and grace, help us to be the masters of ourselves that we might truly be the servants of others. Take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hands and do your good works. Take our lives and live out your life. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. It's no mistake, I guess, that in our scripture today, Jesus tells of a triplet of losses. Only two of those appear in the reading that we shared a moment ago, but the triplet is meant to be read as a whole. It includes the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son. And in that first account, one sheep has wandered away from the flock and is now missing. The shepherd leaves the flock and goes in search of the missing sheep. Perhaps you would do the same. If, like me, you're a pet owner and you've got a few pets at home, if one of those gets out, if little Kitty, who's not supposed to be outside the house, goes out of the door, you are going to leave the others in and go and find Kitty. And hopefully bring her back safely or him back safely to the house. Now in Jesus' day, of course, sheep were not pets. Sheep were valuable commodity. And the shepherd held the responsibility for their well-being. And still, when you spend so much time with an animal that you know their personalities and their idiosyncrasies and their wiles, when that pet, that sheep, goes missing, you need to find it. And you will breathe a sigh of relief and bring it home and share in that great jubilation that what was lost is now found. And the second story, similarly to the first, involves a missing coin. And obviously an item of value. We don't know if it was a, a simple denarii or if it was a valuable coin. But today is the similar experience. If you had lost 
a one penny piece, a copper Lincoln wheat penny, you would be deeply, deeply upset because it's worth $185,000. And you would look for it. You would scour the place to find that simple coin, searching high and low to regain that which is lost. And certainly the recovery of the coin, or in the case of the commodity of sheep, it's a reason for celebration again. But those are nothing, nothing compared to the value of a human life. Remember how smart I've told you that Jesus is over all these years? Well, here's another of his great moves. The third story is also about a loss, but this time about a son. Not a, a little son in a store, but a teenager. One who perhaps has got into a bit of a mess, bucked his parents, left home without the emotional maturity that is perhaps needed, and now there is a great loss. We find ourselves shaken when that news comes of a loss like this. Times when we wonder if we've ever really understood how important someone is in their life to us. And then we suddenly find that they've gone missing. You know, imagine that moment perhaps, and I hope to goodness you haven't had the personal experience of this. When a, a daughter or perhaps a granddaughter has come to the age where they can drive and they set out on a journey and they're a little late coming back and you think, oh, okay. And then that time stretches a little more and you begin to get concerned and then the phone rings. There's been an accident. An accident on the 465 involving a semi and you rush to the place to find that the car has been totaled, but thankfully everyone has survived the accident. There in the pit of your stomach, you have that awful sense of loss. And yes, the car's totaled and it's cost a lot of money, but who at that moment is thinking of the value of the car? No, we're thinking with great thanks of the life of the child. So Jesus has primed the pump, as it were, by telling the first two stories that we heard in our gospel lesson this morning about a lost sheep and a lost coin. But he drives home his message with the story of a missing son. Listen to these words from the scripture. For God created all animals for man, therefore by how much more precious is the creation of man. It is so much greater in God's care for him. Look at the birds of the air. Are they, are you not much more valuable than they are? That's what it says in Matthew 6. And again in Matthew 10, fear not, for you are more valuable than the sparrows. That story of a son leaving home, taking with him what he believes to be his birthright, goes away only to find himself lost, emotionally broken, and the desire to return back home, declaring himself to be unworthy of his father's love, deciding that he must, well, as it were, turn himself into a servant. And yet the father welcomes him back. And not only welcomes him back, but throws a great party for him. That moment of great love, demonstrated by the father. Well, of course, the message is clear. We are those who leave Sometimes believing that we have in our own strength, in our own mind, in our own hopes, in our own desires, what God has for us. Only to find ourselves getting deeper and deeper into a wilderness, into a mess. 
into a sense in which we find ourselves with no hope. But it's clear that when we go missing, God's primary focus is to search for us or sometimes to wait for us. And that's also a difference in the three stories. In the first two cases of the sheep and the coin, the owner searches frantically for them. But in the story of the son and the father, the father who sadly lets his son go, longs for his return and celebrates when he comes back. Now that's an entirely different story. You see, one of God's greatest gifts to humankind is the gift of freedom, the gift of choice, the gift of discernment, of self-motivated loyalty and of learning. And while a coin cannot return to us of its own, neither can a sheep as it were, God hopes that we will. Much as a parent would hope that his or her teen will survive the hormones, the dangers and temptations of young, inexperienced, inexperienced adulthood, and yet an unknown and sometimes misleading world. Trusting in the child's ability to learn and grow from the experience, to find stability and roots. That's what God hopes for all of us, his children. In a sense, God has raised us in faith to love, to dream, to hope, and yet to rely on God for guidance and wisdom through the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean that we'll not encounter challenges or difficulties. Of course we will. Of course it happens. Doesn't mean that we'll never run into trouble or danger. But let God let us know that Jesus is there, that the Holy Spirit is there guiding us. And if we stray or worse, find ourselves lost, the Holy Spirit will offer to guide us. And the Father will welcome us as though we are the greatest prize, the most valuable and cherished thing that he has made. This is the amazing grace that that which was lost is found. That's what the writer to the letter of Timothy is saying, Paul is saying, look at me, this wretch, this person who persecuted, who chased down, who was violent. I am the worst of the sinners, and yet, and yet, God loved me. Jesus loved me. That is amazing grace. So today, today is a day of celebration. For you, you are dearly loved. You who gather here, you who are at home, you are dearly loved by God. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done, no matter where you are in life, no matter what it is that you feel blocks you from the relationship with God that you should have, you are loved. And what is more? What is more? If we feel that we are lost. If we feel that we are wandering in this world at the moment, not sure of what the next step should be, not sure of where we are going in the future, not sure of what our life should look like, then hear this. God loves you. God welcomes you back and God celebrates with you that you have put your trust and your faith in him. For God adores you and will always welcome you home. Amen.
Loving God, we give you thanks that you indeed look for that which is lost. Search out that which is missing. Guide that which is in the wilderness as we go from this place. May we be your hands and feet. May we be your mouthpiece in this world. Help us to help others see the love and grace that you have for them sufficient for every need. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and every day. Amen.